When you think of a center authority over the Roman Catholic Church, you automatically think of Vatican City. The Vatican City, one of the most sacred locations in Christendom, bears witness to a long history and a tremendous spiritual endeavor. Unfortunately, this sacred site has been at the center of various controversies and conspiracy theories. We know the state is wealthy, but how wealthy is it? And from where does it obtain its funds? In this video, we will reveal the opulence and secrets hidden within this famous institution. Join us as we explore inside the trillionaire lifestyle that surrounds the Vatican, providing a unique insight into the lavish society within its walls. Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back to the life of luxury. Savor the flavor of exploring wealth, where we post videos about life and luxury. Join us on an exciting video as we explore the wonderful lives of the elite. We are absolutely thrilled to share our knowledge with you. If you are new here, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that we can continue to post videos on this channel. And don't forget to leave a comment and we'll make sure to engage and start some interesting discussions with you. Let us now explore the Vatican City's untold stories, from stunning art collections to spectacular events. Let us look into the secret treasures that have helped to create the Vatican a symbol of wealth and power. Bankers estimate the Vatican's wealth to be between $10 billion and $15 billion. The Vatican has significant assets in banking, insurance, chemicals, steel construction, and real estate. Dividends assist pay for Vatican expenses and humanitarian activities such as sponsoring 1.5 million children and supplying food and clothing to 7 million poor Italians. Most people are unaware of how the Vatican generates money as a sovereign city-state with its own economy because the Vatican has revealed relatively little information about its finances and assets over the centuries. Now the Vatican comprises 110 acres within the city of Rome and has a population of less than 1,000 people, making it the world's smallest nation. While the Vatican is small in size, it wields enormous financial power because of its significant assets, particularly in banking, real estate, and private sectors. To understand the Vatican's complicated economy, it is vital to distinguish between the Vatican City and the Holy See. What is the Holy See? The Holy See is also known as the See of Rome, the Patrine Sea, or the Apostolic Sea. It is the nation's ruling body. If you signed a contract with the territory, it would almost always be with the Holy See. Vatican City is the real location of the Holy See. Now, how does the Holy See make money? First is through Peter's Pence, a term from the 8th century for gifts collected from Catholics all around the world. A separate department receives gifts from people to the diocese on behalf of the Holy See. Second, through earning interest on its reserves and investing in them. According to a new poll, as little as 10% of the nations made by Roman Catholics that are specifically marketed as assisting the poor and suffering actually go toward charitable action. According to the Wall Street Journal, which cited sources familiar with the matter, almost two-thirds of the remaining $55 million in donations for Pope Francis's annual charity appeal, known as Peter's Pence, are used to close the Vatican's administrative budget gap. The assets of Peter's Pence have declined from more than $775 million to $665 million since Francis became Pope in 2013. And that is, according to the journal which cited sources familiar with the fund's utilization. The canonization of priests is another source of revenue. In an effort to canonize a former priest, Father Nelson Baker, the Our Lady of Victory National Shrine 
and Basilica in Lackawanna, New York, has contributed more than $250,000. The cost of canonization varies greatly depending on the length of the procedure and the specific proof required to establish that a candidate is worthy of sainthood. The funds will cover the publication of Bacon-related literature, prayer cards, correspondence between the Church and the Vatican, travel expenses to and from Rome, and canon lawyer bills. Historically, the Holy See invested primarily in Italian industries, dividing its portfolio between stocks and bonds, and maintaining less than a 6% stake in businesses. It invests prudently, seeking to buy and hold proven companies and industries. As a result, investments in emerging countries have been limited. Recent investments, on the other hand, have become more international, primarily in Western European currencies and bonds, with some activity on the New York Stock Exchange. In addition, the Holy See also has real estate assets all throughout the world, primarily in the form of land and churches. In contrast, the Holy See will not make some investments. It will not, for example, invest in companies that contravene religious views, such as pharmaceutical companies that manufacture birth control pills. In this way, the Holy See's investment policy is comparable to that of other faith-based investors. Last year, the Holy See reportedly paid a total of 126.6 million euros to its 2,880 employees. For many years, the Holy See has actually been running a deficit. The Holy See faced an $18.4 million shortage in 2012, according to the Los Angeles Times. Officials blamed the company's failure on the sluggish European economy and the cost of paying its 2,832 employees as well as teaching the Catholic religion through its many media outlets. In September 2019, German Cardinal Reinhard Max, who heads the Vatican's Economic Council, stated that Pope Francis had asked him to reduce spending in order to eliminate a deficit estimated to be more than 70 million euros. Before we go any further, don't forget to hit the like button and leave a comment below telling us what video references you'd like to see in future videos. Now, let's get back to the video. Now that we've learned about the Holy See, let's look into how Vatican City gets its money. Unlike the Holy See, the Vatican City gets its money through more typical stately endeavors. Having a workforce of approximately 4,800 employees, the city's revenue is generated by a few modest businesses. Millions of tourists and religious pilgrims visit the city each year, as well as the Sistine Chapel, St. Peter's Basilica, and the Vatican Museums. The city makes money from museum admissions, tours, the sale of rare stamps and coins, and the sale of books. While the Vatican does not disclose how much money it earns from these activities each year, the Central Intelligence Agency's or CIA World Factbook estimates the city earned $315 million in 2013, with expenditures totaling $348 million. In 2014, the Vatican Museums held a surplus of 63.5 million euros nearly double the previous year. The city has even hired out the Sistine Chapel on occasion, with Portia and 40 fans spending $5,900 to attend a banquet beneath Michelangelo's brilliantly painted ceiling in 2014. The Vatican maintains that the chapel is not for rent. The Vatican appears to be making large profits in every aspect of its activities. Furthermore, Tourism has almost quadrupled since Pope Francis took office for Pope Benedict in March 2013. During events at the Vatican, almost 12 million people have actually gathered to visit Pope Francis. This does not include the attendance at Pope Francis's engagements outside of the Vatican, which adds another 13 million visits.
The position of the Vatican Bank is possibly the most disputed and poorly understood component of the Vatican's finances. The Vatican Bank, officially known as the Institute for Religious Works, is a private bank situated in Vatican City that was founded by Pope Pius XII in 1942. Throughout the years, the bank has been at the center of numerous disputes and claims of mismanagement, money laundering, and fraud. In February 2018, the Vatican Bank accused its former president and his lawyer of stealing 50 million euros through fraudulent real estate and money laundering schemes. The bank's assets, which were valued at about 5.6 billion at the end of 2018, were made up of investments and deposits from approximately 15,000 account holders. Among the account holders were Catholic clergy, Vatican workers, and Catholic religious groups from around the world. The Vatican is indeed the world's smallest country, with an economy shrouded in secrecy. Many are looking to Pope Francis and his reforms to provide transparency, hoping his initiatives clear up the mysteries that have surrounded the Vatican's finances for so many decades. Now, we're curious. What are your thoughts on the Vatican's opulence and secrets? Please let us know in the comments. That's it for now. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, remember to subscribe to The Life of Luxury for more videos to help you explore the wonderful lives of the elite. Make sure you hit the notification bell so that you won't miss out on any of our uploads. See you in our next video!